We'll begin our lesson with a discussion on how to obtain a pulse. There are a variety of pulses you may check as an EMT, such as the carotid, the brachial, the radial, the dorsalis pedis, and the posterior tibial. While it is important to know how to palpate each of these pulses, today we will primarily be talking about how to palpate a radial pulse. In order to palpate a radial pulse, there is a notch located just on the lateral side of the wrist where the radius meets the hand. So that's on the thumb side, just at the base of the palm, place your two fingers, your forefinger and your middle finger, should be parallel with the artery that is running approximately here down their wrist. That is the radial pulse. In order to determine the patient's pulse rate, we must determine first if they have a regular or an irregular pulse. When you palpate the artery, make sure that you pay attention to how the beats are spaced. Here we see a visual representation of a regular pulse and an irregular pulse. Each vertical line indicates a heartbeat. So the regular is evenly spaced, the irregular is not evenly spaced. Now the irregular pulses can also be further described as regularly irregular or irregularly irregular, meaning there is a pattern to the irregularity or there is no pattern to the irregularity. Once we've determined if it's a regular or an irregular pulse, we will hold our fingers on the pulse site for 30 seconds, counting each beat. It's essential that you have a watch for this skill. So you'll count each beat for 30 seconds for a regular pulse and then multiply by two to get the heart rate per minute. If it's an irregular pulse, we'll count for a full 60 seconds and that will be the heart rate. Another aspect of the pulse we must determine is the quality of the pulse. So when you palpate their radial artery, you must pay attention to how the pulse feels. Does it feel strong, weak, thready, bounding? These are all descriptor words for how the pulse might feel. This is also known as the quality of the pulse. Okay, so looking at the vital signs study guide right now, we'll go to the top and we will look at pulse. So make sure that you write the time. Vital signs should always be time stamped because you want to create trends. So when you take a set of vital signs, your first set of vital signs might be at 1300. Your second set of vital signs might be at 1305. Your third set of vital signs might be at 1310. And in comparing those, we can identify through their pulse, respirations, blood pressure, other things, are they deteriorating? Are they getting better? All right, so you want to make sure you put the time. In this section, we're just talking about pulse. So for the rate, for the rate here, we got a pulse of 56. So we counted the beats for 30 seconds and multiplied by two if it was regular. If it was irregular, we counted for a full minute. The rhythm, we've documented as regular, but remember, it could be either regular or irregular. Quality for this one is strong. There's also other options such as weak, bounding, and thready. The location was at the radial. There's also the carotid, the femoral, the brachial, ones on the lower extremities, such as the posterior tibial or the dorsalis pedis. Now, this is what we would consider to be normal. This heart rate this is a little slow. It's a little bradycardic, but that's probably just a healthy person. And then we have the rhythm, regular, strong at the radial. So if you're communicating this to another provider, we would simply say that the pulse is 56, regular and strong at the radial site. Okay? So if you have any questions on documentation, don't hesitate to ask me, shoot me a message on Canvas. And we'll move on to the next module, which is respirations.